So it looks like it's time for us to see where we stand with CNN currently. Let's do a little recap. I've, or we've, lost a lot of great content that came along with short round and transparently miserable little Bri Bri Stelter, the bedwetter. You know, that guy that would have been a school shooter for sure. Then there's my fave. Well, not that you can really have a favorite considering all the wonderful flavors CNN provided. But we indeed lost all of Meathead's roid rage, low IQ high school locker room takes. A little side note on Meathead real quick. I did take the time to watch roughly 45 minutes of one of my favorites, Adam Carolla, interviewing Meathead. You know, just to see if anything had changed in his stick since leaving CNN. And sadly, I have to report the juice just will not let him go. He's still chock full of himself and angry as hell. It just pours out of him. It's similar to Steven Crowder. You just know damn well they are borderline psychopaths as soon as that damn camera is shut off, right? Oh, and kudos to Adam Carolla. He handled Meathead very well. Every time Tucker Carlson's name came up, Chris Cuomo just could not help himself. It was like a toddler struggling with the natural jealousy of a newborn in the family. Chris was like a baby. It's so ridiculous. Anyways, let's move on. Okay, so now we've lost all the glorious racial gender consumed perspective of truly the deepest thinker on the network, Don, get drunk and wipe my nut juice in your face, Lamont. Yeah, he's now out at CNN. Not that anybody really noticed, I'm sure. And of course, his firing is being celebrated by those still at the network, according to the Daily Mail. You know, the ones that created him or helped make him the sick, sad person he is today. You go, Don. You be the self-consumed, egotistical gay man of color. It's good for the ratings. Well, apparently, not anymore. After being demoted some months back to hosting some silly-ass Morning Joe propaganda competitor, he apparently couldn't get along with the other leftist Karens co-hosting the show with him. Imagine that. You mean to tell me good old Don couldn't get along with the nastiest species on the planet? Go figure. Inside that Daily Mail report is also an interesting tidbit that purports to reveal the real reason Lamont was let go, like we haven't had enough of the real reason Tucker Carlson left, the real reason Fox News fired Tucker Carlson, blah, 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 blah. But this has to do with the Vivek Ramaswamy interview, and yes, we'll watch some of that a little later, because it was just beautiful. But not for the reasons most people thought. Specifically, it wasn't Lamont's treatment of Ramaswamy that proved to be the last straw for CNN executives. Rather, it was his treatment of his co-host, Poppy Harlow. Poppy, really. Catchy name, I guess, for a Latino family dog. Orale, Poppy. Is Poppy of color? I guess we'll see later, won't we? Anyways, this from the Daily Mail. Quote, Everyone is talking about the way he interacted with Vivek, one source said. But the way he talked to Poppy at the end of that interview which kind of got lost in the explosiveness, was not lost on Poppy or the executives. Quote, you can just tell from Poppy's body language that she was frustrated and that he'll never learn, unquote. The article continues, watch the interview closely and you will hear Lamont appear to rudely cut off his colleague as she tried to move things along from the confrontation and wrap up the interview. Quote, Okay, can we move on, please, he interjects, leaning back and buttoning his jacket. Poppy, seemingly exasperated, turned to Lamont, quote, Thank you, she says shortly, and carries on. That is what he was accused of doing over and over again, a CNN source said. That was the pattern, dismissing, cutting off, bigfooting, unquote. Okay, so that kind of clears things up a good bit. After all, why would CNN punish a host for being rude and combative to a Republican guest? That happens all the time on liberal networks. I mean, isn't that what they want? But if Lamont's treatment of his co-host was what ultimately got him the axe, that actually makes a ton of sense, doesn't it? The Daily Mail's article goes on to note that the top brass at CNN were worried about continued accusations of sexism and misogyny within the company from a gay black man. That last part was me, but it should have been there in the first place, right? Lamon was a primary purveyor of such, often belittling and demeaning female hosts on the air. 
One such example involved him lecturing Caitlin Collins about an interview she had just finished conducting during a live piece. Although it was five, ten years late, clearly CNN had to do something. Lamont had been a cancer on the network for years. His ratings were terrible, no matter how much they shifted him around, and he had a sense of entitlement that was toxic to those around him, even for CNN and their environment. In fact, the most relevant question surrounding the Don Lamont saga is how he lasted as long as he did. His intersectional box checking obviously provided a certain level of protection others wouldn't have received. Even still, he was so sure of his invincibility that he just kept pushing the envelope. For his continued arrogance, he's now out on the street. Well, unfortunately for Mr. Lamont, I doubt we'll be hearing much from him in the future, despite him stating that he has no regrets about his tenure. While someone like Tucker Carlson has the star power and talent to remain relevant long after leaving a major network, most people have already stopped talking about Mr. Don Lamont. And that's for good reason. He's a dime a dozen leftist propagandist who just repeats the same talking points every other left-wing partisan repeats. There's nothing special about that. And certainly, it's not the kind of thing that launches someone to a successful solo career. I mean, come on, let's be honest. He's no Joy Reid, am I right? <laughs> so, good old Don should enjoy what little press he's getting while it lasts. Pretty soon, he'll be as rememberable as Chris Meathead Cuomo. And when's the last time you've actually thought about old Meathead? Now here's that clip of Vivek Ramaswamy handing him his ass. And that interview that makes you walk away thinking, yeah, the world makes a little bit more sense today. What, do you have anything on this before I move on I, to I China? Just, I don't see what one has to do with the other, but go on. I took up a lot of time with Fox. Oh, it's fine. Before. We have time. I, I, don't, I don't really see what one has to do with the other, especially considering and using the Civil War to talk about black Americans. That war was not fought for black people to have guns. That's, that's, that's not... That war was fought for black people to have freedoms in this country. Yeah. Actually, that's why the Civil War was fought. Okay. And the sad but that part wasn't about fought it. For, for black people to have guns, I think. Actually, you know, a funny fact is black people did not get to enjoy the other freedoms until their Second Amendment rights were secured. And I think that that's black, one of the lessons that we still learned. aren't allowed to enjoy the freedoms. I disagree well with you country. on that, Don. Okay. I disagree with you. I think you're doing a disservice well, to our country. Okay. By failing to recognize when the you, fact that we have the quality black before the law, skin and you live in this country, then you can disagree with me. But we're not. You mentioned in here that I we have three I, different shades John, of I think we have to be able to talk about these issues in the open, regardless of the color of our skin. Black Americans today to say that compare that to 1865 and 1964. I think you to compare absolutely it to 1865 and 1964 is actually. I, I think it's insane. Some of this came by way of RedState.com and the Daily Mail. If you liked it, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everyone for all your donations. They're much needed and much appreciated. Now, with all that being said, we'll see you next time. And no, Poppy Harlow is not of color, at least not to the tune of being named Poppy. All right. Come on, move. Move. Easy, easy. Ah!